The first time you train a learning algorithm, you can almost guarantee that it won't work, not the first time out. So I think of the heart of the machine learning development process as error analysis, which, if you do it well, can tell you what's the most efficient use of your time in terms of what you should do to improve your learning algorithm's performance. Let's start with an example. Let me walk through an error analysis example using speech recognition. When I'm carrying out error analysis, this is pretty much what I would do myself uh, in, in a spreadsheet. To get a handle on one of the errors of the speech system, you might listen to maybe a hundred mislabeled examples from your dev set, from your development set. So let's say the first example was labels with the ground truth label, stir fried lettuce recipe, but your learning algorithm's prediction was stir fried lettuce recipe. If you have a couple of hypotheses for what are the major types of data in your data set, maybe you think some of the data has car noise, some of the data has people noise, then you can build a spreadsheet, and I literally do this in a spreadsheet, with a couple columns like this. And when you listen to this example, if this example has car noise in the background, you can then make a check mark or other annotation in your spreadsheet to indicate that this example had car noise. Then you listen to the second example. Maybe sweetened coffee got mistranscribed as Swedish coffee, and maybe this example had people noise in the background. And maybe one example with sail away song was mistranscribed as sail away song, and this again had people noise, and less ketchup was transcribed as less ketchup, and maybe this example had both car noise and people noise. Note that these tags up on top don't have to be mutually exclusive. During this process of error analysis, as you listen to audio clips, you may come up with ideas for additional tags. Let's say this fourth example had a very low bandwidth connection, and reflecting on the errors you're spotting, you remember, huh? maybe quite a few of the audio clips have a low bandwidth connection. At this point, you may decide to add a new column to your spreadsheet with one more tag that says low bandwidth and check that, and maybe go back to see if some of the other examples also had a low bandwidth connection. So even though I went through this example using a slide, when I'm doing error analysis myself, sometimes I'll literally fire up a spreadsheet program like Google Sheets or Excel or on a Mac, the numbers program, and do it like this in a spreadsheet. This process helps you understand what are the categories, as denoted by tags, that may be the source of more of the errors and thus may be worthy of further effort and attention. Until now, error analysis has typically been done via a manual process, say in a Jupyter notebook or tracking errors in a spreadsheet. I still sometimes do it that way, and if that's how you're doing it too, that's fine. But there are also emerging MLOps tools that are making this process easier for developers. For example, when my team Landing AI works on computer vision applications, the whole team now uses Landing Lens, which makes this much easier than a spreadsheet. You've heard me say that training a model is an iterative process, deploying a model is an iterative process, Maybe it should come as no surprise that error analysis is also an iterative process, where what a typical process would be is you might examine and tag some set of examples with an initial set of tags, such as car noise and people noise. And based on examining this initial set of examples, you may come back and say you want to propose some new tags. With the new tags, you can then go back to examine and tag even more examples. Let me step through a few other examples of what such tags could be. Take visual inspection, you know, the problem of finding defects in smart films. Some of the tags could be specific class labels, such as does this film have a scratch or does it have a dent, and so on. So it's fine if some of these tags are associated with specific class labels, why? Or some of the tags could be image properties. Is this picture of the film blurry? Is it against a dark background or a light background? Is there an unwanted reflection in this picture? The tags could also come from other forms of metadata. 
What is the film model? What is the factory, which is the manufacturing line that captured this specific image? And the goal of this type of process, where you come up with tags, label more data, come up with tags, is to try to come up with a few categories where you could productively improve the algorithm. Such as, in our earlier speech example, deciding to work on speech with car noise in the background. Let me step through just one more example. Product recommendations for an online e-commerce site. You might look at what products a system is recommending to users and find the clearly incorrect or irrelevant recommendations and try to figure out if there are specific user demographics, such as are we really bad at recommending products to younger women or to older men or to something else? Or are there specific product features or specific product categories where the recommendations are particularly poor? And by iteratively brainstorming and applying such tags, you can hopefully come up with a few ideas for categories of data that are worth trying to improve your algorithm's performance on. As you go through these different tags, here are some useful numbers to look at. First, what fraction of errors have that tag? For example, if you listen to 100 audio clips and find that 12% of them were labeled with the car noise tag, then that gives you a sense of how important is it to work on car noise. It tells you also that even if you fix all of the car noise issues, the performance may improve only by 12%, which is actually not bad. Or you can ask, of all the data with that tag, what fraction is misclassified? So far, we've only talked about tagging the mislabeled examples. For time efficiency, you might focus your attention on tagging the mislabeled and misclassified examples. But if there's a tag that you can apply to both correctly labeled and to mislabeled examples, then you can ask, of all the data with that tag, what fraction is misclassified? So for example, if you find that of all the data with car noise, 18% of it is mistranscribed, then that tells you that the performance on data with this type of tag has only a certain level of accuracy and tells you how hard these examples with car noise really are. You might also ask what fraction of all the data has that tag. This tells you how important relative to your entire data set are examples with that tag. So what fraction of your entire data set has car noise? And then lastly, how much room for improvement is there on data with that tag? And one example that you've already seen for how to do this analysis is to measure human level performance on data with that tag. So by brainstorming different tags, you can segment your data into different categories and then use questions like these to try to decide what to prioritize working on. Let's dive more deeply into an example of doing this in the next video.